for my 10 o'clock appointment to get my nails done because it's a new month and it's time to get this stuff off my nails. And the people for the shop just showed up right now. I thought they were gonna be here earlier because I literally got here like 9.40 because I didn't want to be late and I wanted them to start um, on my nails basically a little bit earlier just because it takes so long to do my nails, but they just got here. <laughs> They're so late. <laughs> what the hell? It's like, it's a little bit like maybe 10 on one, but like who comes to work right when their first appointment is? You Usually you have to, like every single job requires some type of setup, whether it's like five minutes before or whatever, but Jesus Christ, talk about waiting to the last second. So we just got our nails done. They are all ready for fall. This is what they look like. I really like it. I like the, it's kind of a, I don't know, it, kind of, it actually reminds me of a preschool or like kindergarten from like the shapes and the colors. But I really like it. I like the burnt orange. Look, actually it's not coming across that well on camera, but it's a burnt orange with like, um, it actually looks teal, but it's forest green and the yellow color, which, yeah, it's coming off a lot brighter than what it actually is. But yeah, all ready for fall, so finally got the shape back because after a while, uh, stiletto turns into almond because it gets so rounded out uh, just from time. But yeah, I really like these, they're so cute. They are really washed out. They are not, I promise they're not this bright. They're actually darker than this, but they are so cute. I love how simple they are. I like that the shape for me of like, like I said, uh, kindergarten or preschool, but also I think it's more mid-century modern inspired as far as like the uh, shapes go. But yeah, absolutely adorable. But I guess I can take this time to actually give, I guess, an update on my eyebrows. Um, I got my eyebrows done on Friday, October 21st. Yeah, Friday, October 21st is when I got my eyebrows done. And then, um, let's see, it's been 10 days? last Friday would have been seven days I think and today is uh two, no today is Wednesday November 2nd so it's been about at least 10 days by now um my eyebrows are super duper dry um let's see they're really dry yeah the my actual eyebrow hair that was shaved away when she did the procedure is growing back um actually underneath the eyebrow right here and um and let's see the itching it still itches every once in a while but it's not nearly as bad as those three days that it itched horribly um but they're still as you can see still full looking they're still healing um they are peeling what i do for the peeling is i literally just grab a um a q-tip and i just swipe them just slightly swipe them it gets rid of the flaking that can't come off by itself but without it like peeling it prematurely you know because you're not supposed to pick at your eyebrows but i feel like just lightly wiping them with a q-tip uh is okay it helps to remove like the dust and lint that might be up there even though it's safe for me to wash my brows right now um, I'm still nervous because I really don't want to mess them up. So I'm still trying to keep the area as clean as possible with alcohol. Um, so I like wipe around the area with an alcohol swab or a Q-tip. And then I take a dry Q-tip and just dust off my actual eyebrows to get any lint or dust uh, that might be on them. Um, but yeah, it's still going well. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting to see. I'm still very yeah i'm still hopeful to see what they're gonna look like once they've healed um but i still like don't mind everyone else's healing process looks so much worse than mine um mine seems to be going pretty well um it doesn't look as gross <laughs> as others i've seen so i'm hoping that they do heal nicely um and aesthetically pleasing <laughs> um but yes that is it for today I will check back in on another day. Bye. All right, so today is uh, November 4th, Friday, November 4th. And um, it is time for me to wash my hair. My scalp is so itchy. <laughs> in one spot, it's itchy in one spot. And that spot happens to be exactly where my ponytail is. So that's weird. Today I sent off my, my second deposit for the banquet hall for next year. 
And I also finally got, I know we're probably like, look at people hurry up, but I finally mailed off our signed contract for the banquet hall. So they're getting the contract and uh, the second deposit at the same time. Um, hopefully, like we're literally a month behind on sending the contract, but we're, two, we're a month ahead of sending the second deposit. So hopefully that kind of, uh, even things out. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my hair um, because tomorrow I am getting finally a sew in. Uh, I'm gonna get a closure sew in so that I don't have to touch my hair anymore because I, I got that trim that I was supposed to get a few weeks ago. And I never came back and actually um, showed the results or anything, but. Um, the, first of all, my hair looks nice and even, it's great, it's wonderful. Um, but the back of my hair now is, I believe 12 inches, which is so freaking short. And the top of my hair, which the top is always longer, is 17 inches, so that's what we're working with now. So I also wanted to talk about this dream that I had last, or I guess it was kind of like this last night slash this morning, that I thought was funny because it was way more realistic than my dreams usually are. I learned how to lucid dream when I was really young. So when something's going on in my dreams, a lot of the times I can control what's happening consciously without waking up. So I very rarely have nightmares because when something bad or scary or sad um, is about to happen, I can change it or I'll just wake myself up. Um, if it gets to be too much. So I never see anything too disturbing in my dreams because I, you know, I don't let myself. The dream I had this morning was hilarious because um, I was at a bar slash restaurant and I was sitting at the bar uh, with my cousin and my uncle. And there was an older black woman, she was like 60s, 70s. Um, she was working the bar, but uh, she was behind the bar, but she was like sitting down on like a little stool. Um, and everyone, all the patrons were just kind of like, you know, just chilling, drinking, you know, just being customers at a bar. And um, I, remember, I looked at her and I remember she had on um, like this scarf. She had on a decorative fashion scarf. And there was this big centipede um, on the scarf, like right around this area on the scarf that I was draping down, it was on uh, her scarf. And it started moving. Cause I remember, do, I remember I did a double take in the dream. Like I saw it, looked away and then looked back. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is that? I was like, oh my God, there's a bug on her scarf. And then my, you know, I, my brain made sense that it was a centipede and it was really big too. And so it started moving up towards her face. And before I could be like, uh, oh, ma'am, another patron, uh, stepped in and was like, ma'am, 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 excuse me, ma'am, there's there's a bug uh, crawling on you, there's a bug crawling uh, on the scarf, it's, it's going up towards your face. <laughs> no one could get to her because she was behind the bar, like rolling inside the bar, we were supposed to do, like, do a, a nosedive. My dream, you know how in dreams you time jump? So the bug was down here moving like a normal bug would, and then it started, I don't know if it started moving faster or it just like kind of like appeared on her face, but it got on her face and it was like this, it had morphed basically into another bug, but it was like spread eagle on her face and it literally covered up like all of this area here. And so she's like, <laughs> and you know what I do in my dream? I was like, nope. And I packed my stuff up and left right out the restaurant. Like, I was just like, I am not staying here for this. This woman has a bug spread eagle on her face. I don't wanna know what's gonna happen next. That's disturbing, goodbye. Like that, it's just hilarious because normally when I have dreams like that, I just wake up or I change what's happening. But for some reason I kept it going and I reacted in a way that I normally would in real life where I would just like, just walk out of the situation. But I literally just like, I was like, no. And I left the restaurant and started walking towards my car. And my uncle came out after me and he was like, I was looking for you, where'd you go? I turned around and you disappeared. And he was like laughing because he realized I just like power walked out of the restaurant. I didn't want to see what's gonna happen to that lady. That was weird. But yeah, I just thought that was funny. Like it was, it was a funny dream to have because that was one of the most realistic dreams I've had uh, as far as like my reaction. And then the fact that I didn't control uh, what was happening to that poor woman, that's really weird. But yeah, I just thought that was funny and I wanted to 
talk about it on camera because I didn't want to forget it because it's very normal to forget your dreams. Um, so yeah, but yeah, as you can see, this is what my hair is looking like right now. I was I was actually driving in the car when I went to go run a couple errands and I was listening to the radio and it was interrupted by a warning, a storm warning. And I, I was like, oh, that's interesting. They they do this the storm test on Fridays here? That's interesting. It wasn't a test. Uh, they were reporting that there was an active uh, tornado moving 45 miles per hour. And uh, they were reporting like the path that it was going in. And at the time I was driving 45 miles per hour. So I was just like, I would be terrified because you know, a tornado could be a mile wide. I would be terrified to see something that was a mile wide moving 45 miles per hour and then you don't know which way it's gonna go because it changes it does not like it goes into a straight line or like just goes in a circle like it goes however it goes you don't know you can't predict which direction a uh, tornado goes so that's terrifying <laughs> um but i really do hope everyone's okay i'm guessing that it's in the usual area where a tornado happens so people have you know the equipment and the shelter that they need to stay safe that's not 100 percent it's because tornadoes and storms in general are just really unpredictable and let's be real the storms are getting more violent now and more unpredictable and stronger uh because of global warming and what's happening with the environment and the earth is purging so and the earth has every right to as much as i don't want to die um i understand that humans are fungus who have completely taken over the, the world and destroyed it and now we just have to do what's happening So anyway, <laughs> um, enough of that, I guess, because we are inundated with that information all the time. Um, but yeah, this is what my hair looks like, even though it doesn't look that great, because uh, it got really frizzy in the front. Um, but yeah, it looks stupid short, like stupid short. Um, and I don't think my hair is actually even either, it was cut evenly. But anyway, yeah, it's dumb short. It's literally right here it's basically armpit length again i guess a little i guess armpit length is right here which mine is like an inch longer than that um i'm really trying to grow my hair out but it seems like every time it grows out a little bit every time i go get my trim it gets cut right back to armpit length so i'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on with my hair and my guess is that when i put it into those project protective styles uh, it probably just gets way too dry in those styles and the ends just split. Um, and yeah, that really sucks. I have no issue growing hair. My hair grows just fine. I've had longer hair before, but as far as keeping it, it's been a struggle for the past couple years. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out how to keep it. And I think it's literally because cause I, I barely wear my hair as long as I've worn my hair in recent times, but I always have my hair in either a sew-in or in braids or twists or something. So I'm guessing that it's suffering from dryness and it just dries out. So I'm still looking for someone who can, like a professional to actually take care of my hair basically for me so that I can actually grow it out because I'm tired of being a bald head. It's got away. This is annoying. I hate this. This, my, this is so freaking short. Like, ugh. Yeah, my goal is 20 inches naturally. I would love to have 20 inch hair. I've had it before, it's just not happening. Um, I was able to grow my hair out 20 inches before because I was wearing wigs all the time. I wore wigs nine months out of the year. And then for three months, I would just uh, wear my hair straightened. And then after those three months were up, just would put it right back up into a wig. And that's how I was able to grow my hair out. And uh, I just got kind of tired of wearing wigs. I wanted something a little bit more permanent as far as like a sewing so that I wouldn't have to like take it off and put it on every day. So that's why I started doing sewings. But yeah, I think now um, I just need to find um, someone who is good at taking care of natural hair and someone who has growing hands. So that's my struggle right now. So anyway, um, products I'm gonna be using. For my products, I'm going to be using Olaplex number zero and Olaplex number three. You put this one in first, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then 
don't rinse it out and put this one on uh, number three afterwards. Let that sit, I believe, for another 10 minutes. Yep, for another 10 minutes, and then you rinse it out. Uh, go wash it out with shampoo. Preferably Olaplex shampoo, but I don't have that, so we're gonna go with this. Uh, this is the, uh, mm, this is the Gold Series Pantene. Um, I didn't use Pantene for a long time because I was actually taught back in the, 20 years ago, <laughs> that uh, Pantene puts um, a coating on your hair. Now that we're more educated, we know that it's the coating that they were talking about is silicone. Um, and that's what helps to make the hair easy to uh, comb through because it makes it a slippery type of uh, surface so that it just combs right through, which, you know, when you have natural hair, that's kind of a blessing. But um, this one, whatever, it's, it's great. I like it. I actually like it. My hair likes it. It gets my scalp clean. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, that's the shampoo, and then for the conditioner, I'm going to be doing a deep conditioning mask with Alodia. Got it from Target. Uh, it's this, it's going to be conditioner as far as leave-in condition. Probably a combo of the Aunt Jackie's Buttercream and the uh, Camille Rose curl -Aid Moisture Butter. Um, yeah, as you can see, none of my products are all from the same family. I've never used a like an entire product system before from beginning to end i just i don't know why i think that's just how i am i just mix and match things and hope for the best but i think probably the best thing to do is to do one whole system because everything is formulated to actually work together and, and uh, give you specific results and me mixing and matching and you know having a whole buffet of products probably maybe changes my results i'm not sure but um that's what i'll be using so i'm going to go ahead and get started and <sighs> damn it's going to take a couple hours <laughs> this is going to take a couple hours but let's let's do this was on the ticket I just told him the Frankie Beverly and Maze no I just said Frankie Beverly the whole time uh, concert and it was Frankie Beverly and Maze and Shaka Khan and after seven <laughs> crazy he was like Shaka Khan what <laughs> didn't find out until they said up next Shaka Khan <laughs> he was like wait what 
Oh, yeah, he had a nice little surprise, but I didn't tell him who was all on the ticket because he didn't bother to look it up. So if that worked out, great. <laughs> 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 Good morning. I am here at SNU. Uh, let's see, it is Sunday, November 13th. Yeah, Sunday, November 13th. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm on my way to set. Uh, I'm going to be doing some extra work today for a PSA. Let's talk more about my experience. It was it was really short. I think I was there for maybe an hour and a half. It might be, yeah, but yeah, about an hour and a half. So really quick, very easy. So basically, we were all sitting in a theater. Um, we were supposed to be looking as if uh, we were listening to a speaker, and so it was really really easy work. You're just sitting there, and if they ask you to scoot over a seat, you scooted over a seat. You just face forward. And when they when they would uh, give you an action or give you a cue or a command, you would just follow that action cue or command. Then when they would say cut, you would just sit there and wait for the next instructions. It was again super easy work. Extra work usually is really easy. It's just you being a body to fill in the atmosphere to make it the situ to make the scene more realistic. That's all acting extra work is. is that's why a lot of people actually who are either stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home parents, uh, students, or even uh, retired people, they do a lot of extra work just because it's really easy. It's not uh, hard on the body or uh, really taxing mentally or anything like that. You're literally just sitting around and just being a body to make the environment more realistic. That's all extra work really is. Yeah, so it was really, it was cool. It was uh, nice just soaking it all in. Not gonna lie, in between scenes, I went to sleep. Like I was sleeping because I am so sleepy for the last two days of just being up really late. So yeah, I, I definitely took a nap in between takes. Let's open this envelope to see what's in here. Cause I, I asked for cash. So there is five, 10, $15 of cash in here. So that's cool. That's actually cool that I got paid. Um, that's really nice because it's not guaranteed to get paid for extra work. Sometimes you do, but definitely not all the time. It's not It's not a, a guarantee or a standard to be paid for your extra work. So it's nice to get a couple dollars. Um, if, if anything, it pays for your gas. Uh, hopefully you're not coming too far away. If you're coming really far away, then I don't know if it's really, it could be worth your time if you literally don't mind traveling uh, and it's just, you just wanna get out the house. The only thing that made me nervous or semi uncomfortable was the fact that I realized last night, oh shoot, that's right. I'm not gonna be able to wear a mask cause I'm gonna be on camera. And that's not, you know, the whole thing isn't wearing a mask. So but that part I was like, I'm just hoping and praying <laughs> that no one had any type of cooties because I do not want to get sick. I hate getting sick. So that was the only thing that I was actually concerned about was not wearing a mask. Yeah. And it didn't seem like anyone else really cared. I, I was nervous. I'm just like, ah, I'm breathing in all this air from other people. This is weird. Yeah, I'm not ready to raw dog the air yet. So, but other than that, everything else was fine. It was, it was just cool to be around a bunch of people who want to do basically the same thing you're doing. And it was cool to be on set. The, the crew was nice. Uh, the crew were nice. The crew, the crew, uh, wow. I don't know what to put there. The crew was nice. Yeah, overall, I enjoyed my experience and I really hope that I am able to do more extra work and then eventually uh, do like more actual, act like have an actual role, a speaking role specifically. I'm looking to hopefully have that one day. I just need to build up my confidence and also actually have a reel. I don't have a reel. I have to figure that out. I don't even have an updated headshot. My old headshot is not even that great of a headshot. So I need to update that too. So I might need to do that. I don't think I'm gonna do that with this hair because this is not, this is just a snapshot of a moment for me. This is not how I usually present myself. So I don't wanna uh, spend money on 
pictures and uh, then I changed my hair to something of a more natural color like the very next month. There's that on that. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to go back home. I need a nap so freaking bad. So yeah, all right, check in on another day. Bye. All right, so. We are in the Bishop Arts District. Yeah. Bishop Arts District, today is Saturday, November 19th. 19th. <laughs> I think. Yes, no, what? It's the 19th. Oh, my watch says Wednesday the 16th. Did my watch stop? Dang it, I didn't realize my watch stopped working. I need to replace the battery. <laughs> it stopped on Wednesday, apparently. <laughs> we are on our way to afternoon tea at Potpourri Boulangerie. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. I know I'm saying potpourri right. I just don't know if I'm saying boulangerie right. So, yeah, we are maybe two or three minutes late. Hopefully that they'll still take us. Uh, fingers crossed. Check in later. Today's Saturday, November 26th. It is the evening time now, and I'm waiting to go into a show. I'm going to a show called Mesmerica. It's like this 3D show that has beautiful visuals, and it's put to music, and it's gonna be shown in an Omni theater, so it's gonna be a full experience. I'm excited for it. I love stuff like that, so that's gonna be great. And I'm actually meeting my brother here because it's part of my birthday gift for him, so I'm excited to spend time with my little bro. He's on his way, but I'm gonna make my way in because they said they absolutely do not let you in past show time so i'm just gonna go ahead and go in and hope that he makes it on time <laughs> okay <laughs>